there definitely seems to be a major problem with convoys. That's for sure. Especially when Mussolini still has thousands of naval dockyards. I don't know about you guys, but the Hearts of Iron Times 10 mod just wasn't enough. I wanted Hearts of Iron Times 1000, and that's what we have here today. I'm also this weird, like, computer sadist. I, I love almost completely destroying my PC. Uh, it might possibly explode here, just full warning. Basically, this is a mod that changes most modifiers to times 1000. And it's not just construction speed, it also has to do with building slots, 2000 building slots here, as well as experience, air, army, and naval. But it's even more than just that, we also have dumb shit like ideological defense times 10,000, uh, factory repair speed, even training time. Oh man, my CPU is going to melt. Yeah, so obviously I'm going to be lucky to make it to 1937. I don't even know if we can make it that long, maybe six months. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to give it six months. But what I'm going to do whenever this game breaks is I'm going to transition over the map changes, the annexations, the peace treaties, things like that, to just a vanilla game without this mod. That way we can still kind of see the results. Because that's the thing here. Some nations are going to get these bonuses way before others because they're going to go down better parts of their tree. And obviously not all focuses have these crazy bonuses. I guess most of the world already has an insane amount of manpower. Germany with 66 million. The Soviets with... Okay, what the fuck is that? Ah, oh, yes. I like it. Much more realistic. Not all nations are doing well in that category, uh, especially in North America. Mexico with 16 million and the US with 93. There seems to be a little bit of a difference there. But then again, at least the Americans are doing better than the UK. They just got one dude. That That's all their manpower. Good, good. I'm glad this mod is accurately representing the industrial power of Italy. Right now they have the most factories in the world. No one else is even close at the moment. And here's the first civil war in this game. Surprisingly not in Spain, but actually in France. Unfortunately, the uh, French commune kind of got screwed here. I, I don't know what's going on. But then again, the French democracy is probably a little distracted right now. This seems like it'd be a problem. I would just like to know how this would translate to real life, like political power. Do you have no more diplomats? Do you owe diplomats? Are you just running around giving blowjobs to world leaders? Damn, Ethiopia already kicked out the Italians from all of Africa. That didn't take long, it's only May. I guess even with modifiers times a thousand, it still can't save the Italian military. Figures, yep, that was just not gonna go very well. I don't know why that even popped up if they were only gonna be given a state. Anyways, back to normal. Republican Spain versus National Spain. The Republicans have 1,000 factories and uh, Franco only has 500. So yeah, if this is a drawn out conflict, Pretty sure Baldi's gonna be losing. Actually, you know what? Can we just take a second to uh, look at what the production tab even looks like? This is Italy right now with their 4,000 factories. They seem to really like ships. Oh, this explains it. They have 4,000 naval dockyards, not just regular factories. Okay, my bad. But Benito doesn't necessarily have the biggest fleet at the moment. He's working on it. I'm sure it won't take that long. Again, this mod might be a little bit buggy since Hirohito now has negative eight convoys. That doesn't seem like it'd be a problem for Japan at all. Also, side note, it looks like they might be going democratic. That seems to be the way. And we surprisingly made it pretty far in this campaign. Uh, September, I, I didn't think it'd be moving this well at this point. Looks like we are going to make it to 1937. So Turkey's just chilling here with 3,000 factories. Definitely, you know, kind of up there with Italy. And by the end of this game, most nations' construction tab is going to look something like this. And they're just building factories, like, left and right. FDR didn't even make it past 1936, so Alf Landon has been put into power. And, uh, he's a very staunch constitutionalist. Very, very staunch. Here's the first conflict that's not a civil war. China's going after one of the warlords. This could get interesting. Oh yeah, definitely, because uh, Chinese Shrek hasn't even gone down anything. He doesn't have any big sexy bonuses, whereas the other nation does, and they have a whole lot. You know what I think this mod messed up on? I mean, practically every other focus got like modifiers times a thousand, but what about a thousand research slots? It's only fair. Damn, okay, well at this point, uh, things are definitely starting to slow down. We are barely gonna crawl past that 1937 mark. I think this is the main problem too. Uh, once the Soviets get thousands of civilian factories, well, shit is only gonna get way worse. Okay, a Spanish Mr. Clean Man actually did pull it out. Seven states taken. Uh, he was able to clean it up pretty fast. It only took six months. Yep, that is exactly what we thought. China was just not prepared. They probably should have gotten down parts of their focuses that was just giving like 
thousands of free shit away. Wow, okay, Adolf is really trying hard to get on a lot of people's good side. I mean, why not? When you have 200,000 political power, you know, what else are you going to do? Also, at the moment, the two nations with the most factories happen to be actually Germany and Italy. Much more than the Soviet Union and the US. Damn it, I, I wish this game wouldn't die. But yeah, that's definitely what's happening. It it's it's a struggle. Um, but why not, before we end this, uh, let's turn on autocomplete focus trees. You know, just to see exactly how bad things can get. It's probably going to take like an hour to get through one day now. There definitely seems to be a major problem with convoys. That's for sure. Especially when Mussolini still has thousands of naval dockyards. That's a really strange war. We're not used to this at all. Uh, let's see how they do, I guess. Surprisingly, this is the biggest map change that happened too. Unfortunately, you know, they didn't really get that much out of it because China didn't get a whole bunch of factories. If they did, you know, they would have annexed all that too. But wait a second, Brazil just did. Brazil just grabbed Venezuela, which means they now have 12,000 factories. Fantastic. Okay, we, we got to do something about this. I think they also have the most naval experience with close to 50,000. Okay, why is, why is naval experience capped at 50,000? There doesn't seem to be a point in that. Oh my god. No, Germany, Germany, I think, still has the whole world beat 26,000 factories. 8,000 being naval dockyards, 12,000 being civilian factories. Surprisingly, not that many military, though. And now we have been running autocomplete focus trees for about two months. You know, things aren't terrible. Uh, I'm not going to lose my entire PC, but the game's kind of broke. Okay, and according to this, this focus says Germany doesn't have at least 550,000 manpower. I don't even know what to say. Does math not work the same way in this universe? Okay, wait a second. Let's see what happens. Ching China versus Japan. I'm assuming that's... I, well, I don't really know. Oh, duh. That's because they went fascist. Um, I, I thought it had something to do with the fact that Hirohito was going democratic. Nope. He actually still has a long way to go. So we're definitely done here. We are definitely done here. Uh, the game kind of gets stuck every... 24 hours, maybe every hour. I'm not exactly sure, but uh, I'm going to try my best to bring some of these changes over to a regular game. So, Ching China, China, and Brazil, mostly. And a couple other things. So, we're back in normal game, and I think I was able to surprisingly get all the transitions over from the previous campaign to this one. I even gave Brazil more factories, since obviously they were doing quite well. The Italians were also given additional naval dockyards. Not necessarily 4,000, but a bit more than a normal game. And Ching China has just won their independence. That's what I expected. Uh, world tension's at 72%, so things are about to go down soon. Ouch. And unfortunately, this uh, warlord that basically has all of China just found himself in a sticky situation. This is going to be good. I don't think it matters that you're being supported by the Germans and Italians. This is going to be very tough to overcome. Peru is also invading Chile, which typically they do well here. They better hope so, because uh, Brazil's pretty powerful in South America. Smart move. Very smart move. Since Japan's still going democratic, they released Korea, but uh, man, the Koreans can just never catch a break. I'm actually thoroughly enjoying the pure chaos taking place in East Asia. Usually this place can be pretty predictable. It's very different this time around though. Oh, sorry, actually Hirohito's still in power, but he's found himself in a war with Stalin. So uh, let's see how long that lasts. Here's another kind of odd war. France attacking Iraq. Also, Iran recently just invaded Afghanistan. Unsurprisingly, China's about to die. I'd give him about two months. Uh, Qing China's looking good. They can carry on the uh, Chinese name, and Kirito's just barely holding on. I'm mean, not necessarily from the communist invasion. I'm just saying that eventually he's going to have to be dealing with a civil war soon. Should happen in about a year. Iran has just found themselves in a good old Middle Eastern gangbang. Those are always fun. I'm jelly. Regardless what happens here, I think it's clear that the communists are going to win. Uh, obviously, Mao is a part of the common turn. Yeah, that faction will probably beat everyone. Here's another peace deal in the divide of Iran. Turkey took eight states, and I believe Afghanistan just decided to puppet the rest. Yep, uh, can't say I've ever seen these borders before. That's pretty new. Uh, also, uh, obviously, Iraq lost to the French, so they're democratic now. Here we go. World War II's not looking too insane. Pretty normal for the most part. Uh, the French joined the Allies. Uh, also, the U.S. actually just joined in. Peru and Bolivia also just joined the Axis. That's kind of cool. Either way, uh, again, this common turn is very terrifying. Also, uh, the Japanese Civil War just popped up, which at the moment, the Democratic Uprising is a part of the common turn, and things only get worse as Franco joined the Axis and declared on Portugal. 
making them join the Comintern. Okay, uh, these guys have just claimed to be China. That's nice. Uh, they did join the Allies, so they actually should be fine. Damn, and Brazil is definitely having an impact. I was a little disappointed that they didn't join a faction. But you know what? It's all good. And this world's D-Day has actually happened through the Mediterranean, coming from Free France into Iberia. That seems like a pretty smart strategy. And it's over. Argentina taking one state, Soviet Union taking six, Japan taking seven. This is actually kind of limited. I'm assuming the Allies took a lot more, more than likely, because they just made everything democratic. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed the Hearts of Iron 4 times 1000 mod, even though we only really spent like a year in it. At the same time, and that's the only way to do a mod like that. I mean, if we're going to have like a modifier times 1000 everything, you got to fuck your computer up a little bit. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. A big thanks to Furry Cruz, Daddy Seabean, Mr. Fister, Yeet God McNeckass, Jen's Love Disc, Tanner of the Nazareth, Thick Dick Girl Breakson, Drew's Crack Baby, King Solomon, Kiwi Supreme, Dr. Freaky, Franco is Thick, Maxi G, Swiss Argo, Sean Spillman, Jake Paul's My Daddy, Roosevertcation, Elijah Senpai, Raging Fruit, Delta Aurora, Kirby, and Alfie C.